Hey there fellow adventurers, I am Sunshade and today we're gonna talk some more about WoW Remix and how to get your rewards most efficiently for the event. As always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more updates. So WoW Remix has been out for a few days and it is now confirmed that it will be around for about 3 months, so there is no rush in doing everything quickly and getting all the mounts and transmogs in day 1. The leveling of the first tune happens quite fast while completing any sort of content as everything gives you experience threads for the artifact cloak. However, we notice that the absolute fastest way to get the experience bonus really fast is to do the raids on normal difficulty as soon as they are available. The bosses drop epic quality threads and bonus experience so I also recommend not having auto loot on and looting the experience threads first before looting the bonus XP of the boss. Some mechanics in the raids seem to be overtuned at the moment, but that's due to scaling issues of the different level players within the group as far as we could tell. The tactic I used was to level up a hybrid character, aka a monk, so I can queue for any content I wished without long waiting times and buff my cloak to high levels. Your alts will be able to skip the first few quests on the Timeless Isle and get the cloak immediately, and their cloak will already be buffed, but not as high as your highest one. Your alt cloaks will start with limited extra stats on the cloak, like 150 main stats, 750 extra stamina, 150 versatility, and 100% experience gain as your maximum. You will be able to trade over the gems from your main character to your alts as well if you have a trustworthy friend. Trade the gems to your friend and then your friend will hopefully trade them to your alt. This way your alt can straight away begin with very strong legendary gems in their very first slots they unlock and those alts are quite OP due to the cloak buffs alone. As soon as it was available my friend and I queued for heroic dungeons and a normal raid and we noticed that we were much much stronger than the higher level players in our groups even though we only had the artifact cloak and hadn't yet equipped our main gems. For my first character I didn't notice a cap on the experience gain yet as it kept getting epic threads from the normal raids up until I gained level 70. The highest experience buff I got on my mains cloak was 386%, so my alt will probably get even more as it already starts from 100% and now I know about the raid experience boosts. The raids are also on a daily lockout so you can log in every day and do all the normal raids when they become available to your level in order to buff your cloak as high as you like. Another important thing relating to the raids is the loot. I only managed to test the normal raids for now and what I can tell you is that normal raid drops blue quality gear, which also has main stats on them, so even though they may be lower item level than some of the green items you have, you should keep the blue gear and you can upgrade it to higher item levels by talking to Momentus for item upgrades. The upgrades work similar to the way they do on retail, meaning they will cost a lot of currency, bronze in this case, if you don't have a higher item in your bags. However, if you have a higher item level green item and you wish to upgrade a lower item level blue item, the bronze cost will be reduced to almost nothing. Bottom line, keep the blue gear and upgrade it when it's cheap if you so wish. Heroic raids will drop epic quality loot for you, but you can only do those at level 70, so they should already drop at the highest item level there can drop, and if you wish to spend insane amounts of bronze on them, you can choose to upgrade them even higher. In order to fill up all of your gear slots with a neck, rings and trinkets, you will need to complete some achievements. In order to get your trinkets, you will need to do the Escalation achievement, where you have to complete three of the scenarios listed there for your first one, and the other one is rewarded from gaining level 70 on your Time Runner character. Your rings will be rewarded from completing all of the heroic scenarios for one and all of the heroic dungeons for the other. The neck will be rewarded from completing all of the Pandaria raids on normal difficulty. These will need to be completed on every alt you make, so for your alt's gear, you will need to complete these all over again. Now let's talk a little bit about which gems are strong at the moment for different situations. The stats gems are obviously great the higher you can upgrade them, and the stats you use depend on your spec. There are WoW Remix guides on WoWhead for each class, but take them with a grain of salt as things change rapidly when it comes to this event. For your cogwheel gems, which fit in your boots, you can pick whichever ability you find most useful. You can use speed like roll, blink, stampeding roar, soul shape, heroic leap and so on, but you can also choose Spirit Walker's Grace for casting while moving, Vanish for sneaky escapes, or Leap of Faith to either help or troll your friends. Dark Pact is a must-have for the squishy players who need a huge shield. 
the meta gems are where the big DPS is right now. Since some bosses have been proven to be overtuned due to scaling, our WoW friends have figured out a way to beat this by having some players in the group equip Ward of Salvation into their helm slots, using it on the tank at the start of the fight and overhealing that tank like crazy. When the ward explodes, so does the boss. Charlie's Spirit helps your friends spam their abilities at no cost, which is amazing for your Boomkin friends for Starfall. Oblivion's Fear does a big AoE kaboom and makes enemies take increased damage for 10 seconds. And Thundering Orb pretty much zaps everything nearby, but be careful to not ninja pull things you weren't planning to with this one. There are plenty of these gems you can choose from, and many of them are pretty strong. You just need to pick one based on your current situation and group requirements. The last type of gems and the most varied ones are the Tinker Gems. You can have 12 of these equipped at max gear and they provide a plethora of buffs for your character depending on the situation you are in. Ankh of Reincarnation is amazing if you are a floor POV kind of guy as it helps you cheat death quite often. Brittle is a big bada boom on AoE if you don't kill enemies evenly. Victory Fire is also great on AoE for both DPS and healing. Quick Strike is very strong for melees giving them extra auto attacks. Mark of Arrogance is great for longer fights where it can stack up. Wind Weaver makes you speedy, immune to falling damage and has a chance to buff your friends with a lot of haste and it pairs up quite nicely with Righteous Frenzy which also buffs haste when you heal an ally. My favorite combination for AoE content however is Explosive Barrage, Meteor Storm, Opportunist, Lightning Rod and Stunstrider's Flourish as they all work together into buffing each other for big bada booms. And of course we cannot forget the big hero of the Tinker Gems, Slay. This will pretty much destroy anything under 10% health, so it's an amazing gem to have not only in solo content but also in dungeons and raids as it really really blasts at the moment. Another thing I would like to recommend when it comes to your gems is the add-on Narcissus as it organizes your gems, shows available slots and helps you quickly exchange them in your slots besides many other features it has for retail as well. But perhaps you are only here for your transmogs, pets and mount rewards and you don't really care about anything else this event has to offer. That's alright, let's get you some fast bronze then. There are several ways of gaining this. Every mob you defeat will drop bronze. Completing quests, scenarios and dungeons and raids will also reward various amounts of bronze or caches containing it as well. But there are some spots where you can get it faster and better. Throughout Pandaria, there are areas with high density mobs you can quickly finish off to loot your bronze, but one in particular seems to be the best for it. In the southeast area of the Timeless Isle, there is a hyper spawn of frogs where mobs start at level 45 and you can farm these like crazy in order to get bronze, lesser charms of good fortune, threads for your cloak, timeless coins and gear you can use or scrap for even more bronze. You can use the group finder to make or join a farm group for these and there will be a lot of people on most realms clearing these. Most groups will be made of 4 players so that the targets won't be grayed out for everyone else, so keep your group small. The great thing about these, besides the constant spawning and how easy they are to clear and fast tagging, especially by Boomkins, Frost Mages and Hunters, is the fact that they drop lesser charms, which you can also turn in for rep and more caches of infinite treasures. And for those very speedy farmers who don't have time to waste clicking caches and scrapping gear, there are some Weekoras and add-ons that got you covered as well. This Weekora will automatically open all of your caches as you earn them without you having to do anything more and the easy scrap add-on will help you scrap your gear super fast. But make sure you filter out the gear you want to keep and the gems so you don't accidentally turn these into bronze. Regardless of whether you play WoW Remix for the awesome rewards or just for the fun of it, I hope this guide helps you reach your goals faster. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the channel for more WoW content. See you in the next one, bye!